Is this finally time to buy a new Tesla Model S or Model X? If you asked me a few days ago, the answer would be absolutely no. And there's a video about it already on my channel simply because the car is outdated. And if you were to buy one uh, a week ago, uh, probably you would end up seeing uh, it refreshed only a few months later or definitely by the end of the year. Uh, there were plenty of reports about that. But things have changed yesterday. They actually did a refresh, not a, on the outside or an interior. It was maybe like a technical refresh, but now it's a whole new story. Uh, let's talk about whether or not it's now smart to buy a new Model S and Model X. And for that, I uh, have Eli Burton of My Tesla Adventure because it is Wednesday uh, and uh, in his uh, segment Supercharged, uh, he's going to tell me his opinion and we'll talk about it coming up next. Welcome to E4 Electric, your number one source of unbiased electric car news. If this is your first time here, go ahead and click on that subscribe button down there so you don't miss anything moving forward. All right, so quick thing, uh, we're taping this video a day before, so we don't know what happened with the Q1 earnings call. So there might be some news there, but I think we can go on what we already know. There's There shouldn't be anything changing over the last 24 hours. Well, I also should be saying that because it is Tesla. But uh, we, uh, let me just quickly remind you that the refresh, uh, was basically for the powertrain. The Model S can now go 370 uh, miles and the Model X can go 325 miles. Uh, the uh, the charging rate went up to 200 kilowatts with a V3 um, and they reintroduced the $78,000 uh, Model S uh, base version and the $83,000 Model X version. So that's, uh, that's what we're going to be talking about and Eli is going to come in just in one second. Before that, of course, I want to Remind you that this video and this channel is sponsored by Byton. Check out their uh, uh, M-Byte, an all-electric SUV, uh, scheduled to come to the U.S. and Europe next year, starting at only $45,000. Check out that humongous shared experience screen, one of five flat screens in that car. Over 50,000 uh, reservations have been made around the world. You should do the same as well because it takes absolutely no money to reserve a Byton, so you should do it at Byton.com or in a link in the description of this video. All right. Let's talk about the uh, Tesla Model S and Model X refresh. And we uh, will talk about whether or not it's time to buy one if you're looking to buy a new uh, Tesla. All right, without further ado, uh, let's talk to Eli. Eli, welcome back to the show. What's going on, man? Alex, it's so good to be back on the show with you, man. It has been a whirlwind of Tesla news the last 48 hours from yes. the autonomous day to just 24 hours after that what is by all measures a true technical refresh of the car. It is. The only thing that they didn't refresh, and I guess we may not even care about that, is putting the 2170 uh, cells that the Model 3 has, uh, but it looks like they improved cooling and a powertrain so much that they were able to achieve all this uh, uh, pretty good improved and record stats uh, uh, with, with the old battery cells. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so like, let's go through what they did. So they've increased the range on the long range Model S to 370 miles. Um, that's a big jump from the previous, I think it was like 335. I mean, we're starting to approach the 400 mile mark here. They have improved efficiency by switching the motors. That's how they did it. They didn't even changed the battery. And that's a, that's a really big deal from Tesla's standpoint to be able to do that without raising costs to give drivers more range. 10% increase in power. One of the things that's really huge for me is that the charging rate, the Model S is going to be able to take advantage of a 200 kilowatt charging rate on the V3 superchargers. And that's something right now will cut down my commute time drastically. So when you add 50 more miles of range and 200 kilowatt charging, I'm going to be able to go from the Sacramento to the Bay round trip without even stopping for a supercharge. Well, also round don't trip. forget, even the new one with a 370 mile range, you can actually go from San Francisco to LA without charging, which is pretty remar remarkable. And by the way, I'm going to have to throw you in my car and we're going to have to make a video out of that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'd love to sleep through the, another trip with you, <laughs> you know, uh, just, just so to, people don't know that we, when we go on trips, I end up sleeping <laughs> while you know, I live up. The entire up time. Yeah, yeah. The entire time, yeah. guys. Uh, but you can tell by my eyes right now that I constantly need sleep. Like, this is... Uh, anyway, listen, uh, you know, I, I think people know everything that kind of happened and I gave them, both of us kind of gave them already the, the summary, but like, okay, so, you know, 
we, we talked about it, uh, you know, just a few days ago that, you know, why would anybody buy a brand new Model S or Model X when they're so outdated? Model 3 is much better technology in every single way. And, and, and the Model S and Model X are probably going to get the refresh. Um, yes, literally, when, even as soon as 48 hours ago, I was giving advice to people online to buy a Model 3 and do not buy a Model S or X 48 hours ago. Okay. Because if you wanted to buy a new S or X, that wasn't the car to buy. All the new tech was on the Model 3. And even if you wanted an S or X, my advice to friends, family, people I know through the internet, the My Tesla Adventure community, is if you're in the market for an S or X, look at a good CPO option, look at a showroom deal, don't buy new, but wait, wait for this, wait for the, wait for the update that's coming. And I think I think what we're seeing is the first part of the update is here. Now, I don't think the I don't think this is the total refresh too. I, I know think the I, that was my second question coming. to you, right? So okay, so let's let me let me circle to that, and we'll talk about uh, the other stuff a little bit later. But like, all right, so I mean, obviously they refreshed pretty much everything technically that we wanted them to the levels that I think everyone's very comfortable with: 200 kilowatt charging, 370 mile range. Uh, that's for the, that's for the Model S. Um, but they didn't refresh the interior or exterior now let me tell you what i think about this i think this is perfect because i love the exterior and i know it's kind of technically industry standard or uh, due to to refresh but i can't think of anything that would look better so i'm okay with that and i certainly if the electric dot uh, co pictures that leaked from tesla leaked uh, from tesla of the new refresh which basically makes it look like a model 3 inside if that's true then i don't want it at all so i might say this may this model s uh can pr pretty much might just be as perfect as it gets right now and when they do the exterior interior refresh that might make things worse um so what do you think alex i completely agree so i think the model 3 screen that that screen setup looks great on the model 3 I don't want that on my Model S. I don't want the single central screen. I like that the Model S is set up still for a driver experience. You know, it's funny coming from me because I'm somebody who's obsessed with autopilot. I've done 30,000 miles, probably 29,000 of which are an autopilot. When I do take control, I want to grab my ground-based spaceship and really ride this thing hard. I like the way the Model S serves me data on the two screens. So for me, this is the perfect window. This is literally the best of both worlds. So I can get a, uh, a faster charger speed. I can get ludicrous mode. I can buy a performance car. Ludicrous mode will be free. I'm going to get all the tech improvements without the interior improvements that I don't want. And Alex, I agree with you with the exterior. I think the Model S design is timeless. And I can't imagine anything that they could, they're going to change to the Model S exterior that I would want to see. I mean, once they went away from that little button nose that they were doing before when people weren't used to the idea of not having, you know, the radiator and, and, and all the ventilation, once they went away from that to the current design, I love it. Like, I, I, well, I don't know what, what, what update they'll come out with in the future on the exterior. And someday you've got to imagine they're going to do something because they, they can't just sell the same body type for 20 years. But I, I love it they? the way it is. Or can they? Like, here's the thing. Maybe There's they a can. Volkswagen bug that just kind of came back pretty much in the same body style. Maybe a little bit of a refresh, right? Like, there are some – and the Volkswagen buzz is coming back probably – almost very similar to what it what it used to be uh, 50 years ago. So no, it's possible. And um, I, I still have the, the, right, the cone right. nose uh, and I, I agree. I mean, I, I to be honest with you, there are some people who do like it better. I like the new look, it's a little more slick. Um, all right, so now, <laughs> You know, the, okay. let me add, let me add one yeah. more thing too. Yeah, yeah. Like, in fact, I so much think that this is the right time to do it that I'm about to show you something that nobody even knows yet. I haven't even unveiled to my community on Instagram. I just ordered a brand new Model S performance. Whoa! Just 15 minutes Whoa. ago. Whoa! Whoa, dude, that is uh, okay. Well, I, we see this is why we do this on air. Uh, well, okay. So tell me about it. Like, why did you decide to? What did you order exactly? Uh, a why and what's going to happen with the uh, geek ship geek ship that you have right Good. now yeah so basically i looked at the numbers of it i went onto the configurator and the car that i'm going to be getting is going to be blue the mid uh, midnight metallic blue exterior i'm going with the white interior this time i it was something i regretted previously not doing the white uh because it just looks like a spaceship the reason i didn't do white originally is i was concerned about rub off from blue jeans but what I found out when, from learning from other owners who bought these, that if you have your seat ceramic coated, 
it really decreases the significance of that problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the white seats. As soon as I get it, I'm going to have them ceramic coated to give that extra layer of protection because I wear blue jeans every day. And I'm going with 19 inch wheels this time instead of 21s. So that saves me $4,500. And part of that too is because I still have my arachnids. So, you know, I'll have to get them touched up since you curbed them, but I'm going to put the arachnids. That, that will, I will the never car. hear the end of this, but that was pretty bad. No, yeah. I will no, never hear it, it was pretty bad. Yeah. It was pretty yeah, bad. It was pretty bad. Um, it was, it was on I'm, an empty parking lot where really a, a, a finding a curb was, was difficult, <laughs> but I did that. So yeah. Oh, forever in that, in that now. We'll show you guys at the after show. We'll show you a picture of the curved up ribs on Instagram. So <laughs> yeah. Go check out E for Electric's Instagram and you can see my curved up ribs. Uh, They're so my, I, I feel I'm, like I bought them now. <laughs> you might have to. Yeah. Um, I'm also didn't, and now, and now it's great because like previously I got the sunroof and I actually regret getting a sunroof because I've used it maybe four or five times. Yep. And every time I get into someone's Model S that doesn't have the sunroof and I just look up and you have that full sheet, it's, it's just so gorgeous. So I'm not doing this sunroof this time it's gone anyway so i couldn't choose it um and autopilots included which brought the price down further the only thing i'm paying for is full self-driving and the total price on my car i went and looked to, to what i got my previous one for the total price on this performance model s that's going to come with ludicrous mode is only two thousand dollars more than what i got two years ago and i called tesla and i said hey and you have a 75d get, just so people know i have a right? 75d so fully they, loaded fully loaded 75d so the the performance with a ludicrous mode right now with a, with a new with all of the new tech is costing you only a few thousand dollars more than the 75d cost you uh, that also not included full okay they did include full self driving um, you know okay go on and then we'll talk about if that's a problem yeah. you know yeah for exactly. Tesla and I think it's a good discussion to have too yeah. so I called Tesla and I said hey. I want to do this. Talk to me about this. Cause I'm like before, when I ordered before and you made the $2,500 deposit, if you canceled your order after 72 hours, you lost the deposit. So I called them. I said, Hey, I want to do this. It's going to take me some time to put together financing and take care of my existing car. And they said, Hey, you know what? We've actually changed this now. No problem. Your $2,500 is refundable all the way up until the day of you sign papers for delivery. So literally I could cancel, I could go into the store ready for delivery, cancel my order, get my $2,500 back. I could even take the car for a week, drive up to a thousand miles, return the car and get my $2,500 back. So they removed that barrier. Then I said, well, Hey, what if the car comes in too quickly and I haven't had time to get rid of my 75 D yet? They said, no problem. We'll give that car to somebody else and we'll rematch you to a new car that's coming off the line. So like they've made it so easy, like all the barriers that could potentially have been there for me not to do it are gone. So I was like, I got off. I got off the phone with them. Picked up my phone and placed the order. Congratulations, man! And I'm looking forward to it. At one level, another level, I cannot drive or be inside of a, a, a ludicrous mode Tesla because I literally get nauseous and I usually get a headache for hours if you if you launch it. Like you know, last time I had a possession of. I think I don't think it was 100. I was a P90D with Ludicrous, and I was in 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 you know in full control. I was driving the car, and I think I was showing it to my coworkers. Uh, you know, and and uh, I, I launched it fully prepared, and boom, headache for the rest of the day, nauseous for the for the next couple of days. So um, I'm definitely gonna have to be asleep now that that when you're driving that car. But listen, I'm excited, and this is I guess is a great example of saying like. The value is tremendous right now. The car will not get outdated, at least technically. Uh, looks like all the hardware is there for a while now, so you're just going to be getting updates for the full self-driving. And autopilot is still at, a, at the, the autopilot price is going. Self-driving is going up on May one. So that was another compelling reason that like you get to take advantage of all of this stuff right now. So what was the total uh, price of this particular configuration? Uh, One hundred and five thousand. 105,000. Okay. So, and then, well, then you're going to bring it back up a little bit with the, um, uh, well, you're not qualified for California refund. I don't know if you do, but let's say you don't. I am. No, no, no. Oh, that's you... cash. So oh, it goes right. down to 90, it goes down to 90 something thousand with all the rebates. So yeah. under, under, under a hundred thousand. Yeah, no, that is, that is a great deal. Now, uh, and so we're kind of answering question about, you know, whether or not people should buy it. Um, you, but, you know, there's another thing that's going to be coming up. And I really just did a, a, um, a show about uh, how uh, used Model S's were a great value. And I've showed uh, some of the um, 
some of the uh, uh, pictures here that uh, that I'm sh gonna show you guys. Some of the, I, I mean, these are all gone, right? Like we're talking about, you know, forty-five thousand dollars for a, um, a a new refreshed nosed car with uh, sixty thousand miles, but you also get the warranty up to a hundred thousand uh, miles. Uh, then this one, which is uh, uh, only had ten thousand miles on it, but you could buy it for forty-seven. Four, that one's gone. Here's another one for only $28,000 with 72,000 miles, which means you'll still get a warranty to up to 100,000 miles. So these are all like insane deals. And um, I can only imagine what you'll be able to get. First of all, used ones will have to go down in price because they're now more outdated. And uh, secondly, the inventory cars that they have right now that are now outdated as well. I can't imagine how amazing discounts could be on that. And I might go for one of those actually myself. So what are your thoughts on the used inventory and what's going to happen with that? So if you don't, if you're not an existing owner and you don't want performance, because there's a key that that $20,000 ludicrous free is only for existing owners. But if you're, if you're not looking for performance, you're not an existing owner and you're not, and you're okay with the current tech and not what's coming next. Absolutely. Showroom discounts and inventory discounts are going to be big because now they've got to compete with, I mean, this is a big value jump. So like I'm expecting to see cars selling for 20,000 off sticker and for a $20,000 savings, all of a sudden you could have what wasn't in your price range now be in your price range and, or get it in tremendous value. So yeah, if you're somebody buying right now and, and, and like you're looking to capitalize on those savings, definitely call your Tesla store and ask them about inventory and showroom deals. I also wouldn't wait because I have a feeling it's going to set that, that inventory they have is going to sell very fast now that they've made this update. Yeah. Now, okay. So let's talk about some stuff that may not sit well with uh, 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 existing Tesla owners. Well, I mean, first of all, obviously, once again, you know, they've they've discounted to zero, uh, twenty thousand dollar ludicrous uh, a package. Um, if you're somebody who bought a Tesla with a ludicrous package and did pay for twenty thousand dollars, did not know the refresh was coming. You just bought a car that now is very much outdated in tech and you paid an extra $20,000 for something that people are getting uh, for free. Not the first time Tesla did it, but what are your thoughts this time around? So to be clear, the $20,000 free ludicrous mode is only for existing buyers who right. buy a new car. So With if you're a buying a new car for the first time today, so if you buy a performance today, you don't, and this is your first Tesla, first, sorry, first model S or X, not even for previous three buyers, right. they're rewarding people who bought S and X. So it's only for those folks. If you're somebody who is an early buyer and, and you just upgraded to like a P100D, for example, they now call it performance with Ludacris. But for me, in my head, it will always be P100D. If you just upgraded your existing buyer, that really sucks. Yeah. Um, that yeah. just sucks. If you, if you, if you, and I don't think there's going to be many people in that camp. I don't know many folks who already had S's and X's who are looking to upgrade right now. Every, everybody I've heard talking about this is waiting. If you're one of those people, it's a bummer. But if you're not one of those people and you're just a new buyer, I mean, this is, this is one of the things about Tesla that like, if you're going to buy into Tesla, people need to understand that they're not adopting what is a traditional automake, automaker approach. It's much more of a tech company approach, which like, for example, Apple doesn't care about the resale value on your iPhone 6. They care about what the technology is going to be in the iPhone 10 and the iPhone 11 and always looking forward. And that's not something that the auto industry has done with the exception of Tesla. So when a lot of people buy or when some people buy a Tesla and they have expectations like that from the rest of the auto industry that, you know, their resale value is going to be protected. Tesla is not does not show really any interest in protecting that. They, they seem to be very interested in innovating as hard and as fast as possible. And that means that you know, that resale value is going to take a hit. I mean, that's, 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 that's a expectation you should have going in buying the car. And I think with how fast they're moving things now, I think it just doubled down on that. And you know what, for some people, they're not going to be okay with that. And if that's the case, look, don't buy an electric car from Tesla. There's other automakers that are starting to get there with electric cars, but do buy electric. Whatever you do, buy an right. electric car. Yeah. Don't buy gas cars anymore. Yeah, and and but but I do have to say that Elon taunted the fact that Tesla's had a. Um, there were a few articles coming out that Tesla holds the value the best and so forth. He did taunt at that. I mean, we know it's not true. I mean, I just showed you their own used inventory that you know completely crushed the prices only after ten. 20,000 miles, uh, granted they, they are a uh, few years old, um, but at the same time, no car manufacturer out there has their cars, if you compare seven year or even five year run, 
uh, you know, if I looked at five-year-old BMW, um, let's say five series, and I looked at a five-year-old Tesla Model S, the BMW will almost almost the same gonna have all the same tech same look and everything tesla is almost like a different car especially with the what's inside that has to devalue and it does devalue the the car um and you know talk to me a little bit about what well, how do you feel about that that these uh, these cars get uh, devalued as fast as your iphone now and compared to other cars but secondly you know should they cut out like screwing people this fast? At least if it's over time and it falls really, very quickly. Okay, I, I would agree with you at this point. They should know who they're dealing with. But screwing people literally a week after they pretty much gave you the best profit margin, right? When you buy the ludicrous uh, Model S and Model X. That's really tough to take, not only for those people who might just never come back to the brand, but everybody looking around saying, gee, you know, will I be next? Like, I may not be buying the ludicrous mode, but they've done it with other people who've bought different, you know, like full self-driving, for example. Do you think that needs to be cut out? And also the second question is, are you OK with uh, Tesla's being devalued so fast by Tesla? Yes. So my entire pitch on this and what is very much true is Tesla is a tech company selling a car product. They are a tech company. They're very much a tech company first. So, it, I mean, same thing that we're seeing happening with computers and computers have stabilized a little bit, but especially over the last few years, when it came to buying graphics card, it mattered what quarter you purchased it in quarter, we're talking three months. And I spent a couple thousand dollars on a graphics card and, it's, and, and now with the new chip is starting to smoke my previous one. But yes, I think it is absolutely okay. I think Tesla needs to keep doing that because they are an innovative tech company. And I think they need to continue that progress. I think people jumping in just need to be, uh, be, need to be aware of what they're getting into. They need to be, you know, part of it too is what we see coming out here is one of those unfortunate human traits of envy. A lot of people are upset because they see somebody else get something better than they did. But you know what? It, it's, it's really unfortunate because if you were happy with what you got at the time that you purchased it, nobody made you make the purchase. But if you saw enough value in what you bought at the time that you wanted to buy into this experience now, you're buying into a tech product that is, I mean, we're watching these rapid innovations or evolutions. I mean, shoot, even looking at the S right now, there's tech that's on this updated S that is not that exists on the three that's not on the S. There's this new air conditioner control system. The bigger one is a 2170 battery cells, and that's still not going into the S and X. Someday it's going to, and all of a sudden the S and X may have a 500 mile range and 300 kilowatts charging. And like, we know that's going to happen. But even so, I just put down the money for a performance model S today because the price to value is so good. I feel like I'm being well served as a customer. Yeah. But on the other spectrum, there are people like me who like my lease expiring in a couple of months. And, uh, you know, as you know, I've kind of cooled down on this whole e-tron thing. I'm actually even thinking about the Jaguar i -Pace, believe it or not now. But, you know, I wouldn't mind maybe even going for another year or two with a Tesla as much as abuse as I've gotten. And I expect more from them um, just to basically see what's out there in the next year or two. And there are people like me who are saying, well, I can't buy new like my answer. Like we know your answer. Boom, it's right there on your phone. You just, my answer is still, I personally still will not buy a new Model S and Model X simply because, you know, tomorrow, if they, if they uh, um, refresh the exterior or the interior, which it looks like they might, especially with the interior, once again, my car, car is going to be, uh, you know, devalued um, or they put uh, see, a, I don't See, I don't agree with you on that. I think there's going to be enough people out there who are going to want the current, current S screen set up that I think that the R, the people who get S's right now are actually going to have a bit of an increase in value when the new, when the new screen sure. comes out in there and people don't want it. Also, too, I'm getting a car that is $20,000 under sticker of what anybody else can buy it for. Because I'm an existing owner, so like yeah. my car actually appreciates the moment I buy it and take delivery. Um, but you, you know, you're absolutely right. And you know, if I wasn't if I wasn't in the market for Ludacris, I wouldn't have bought brand new. It would have made way more sense for me to, you know, get an inventory, wait a few months, like you know, wait for a showroom deal at end of quarter. But being that I want ludicrous mode and I can get ludicrous mode right now for free. Yeah. It just makes yeah. too much. No, sense. and I hear, and I'm just saying there are people like you, but there's also people like me who are saying, listen, I, I am a frugal customer, right? Like I actually would like to my car to, I know it's not an investment, but it's, it's definitely something that I don't want to lose too much money on. Um, I know you're like into ludicrous mode. I'm not, I would rather have them take that money and spend on improving their customer service. That has been officially the worst. And I've like, I've owned quite a few cars now. Um, so, but I, I, I guess my, my point is that 
you know, on one hand, they, they've earned a lot of business now. On another hand, they've lost a lot of business now. Um, so I might still be in the market. And I'm actually, to be honest with you, I am going to be looking and I've still been looking every day for the a great use deal. Because I think if I'm going to get another Tesla, it's going to be um, on the budget used so I can sell it about a year or two when I finally decide is it a Detron, is it Taycan, is it, you know, IQC or whatever. Um, because unless the service improves, then I feel like a valued customer again. But um, OK, so um, I know we're, <laughs> we're, we're we don't know what happened with the uh, Q1 report and earnings uh, report and stuff like that. Um, wh one thing, let's just really quickly, let's just say. The new one with the improved computer in there, uh, which means you don't even have to retrofit your 75D anymore. You don't have to worry about that. Um, is uh, probably the best car on the market, including Model 3. Would you agree now that Tesla Model S now is the best car on the market over Model 3? Yes. I think okay. they've now restored Model S uh, to dominance. Definitely. And then you add the Model X for what it does and the Falcon wings and all that madness. I mean, by the way, this range increase in the charge speed is a huge deal for the Model X. Oh, yeah. Because the Model X is a very heavy car. And even at the 100 kilowatt battery, you were getting sub 300 miles. So now that you've really boosted that car with more range, but also faster charge speed, it makes that car even more compelling. And I know you I know your thoughts on the Model X. I mean, it's like the most amazing car ever made. So, no, I, th I think this has restored the S and X to dominance. Yeah, absolutely. And by the way, I hope you I hope you do get a Tesla because you need to experience AP 2.0 plus with this new autopilot and, and, and navigate on autopilot and auto lane change, which I need to get you in my car very soon this week to experience it. It's pretty incredible to experience this march to autonomy like real time. Like yeah. it's, it's really amazing. You, and, and I will. And it's kind of I'm always been kind of on the cutting edge of technology, getting the greatest and latest. And I will probably feel a little weird just driving my little Chevy Volt. Uh, uh, for a while, but at the same time, like once I get into the new car, I really want to be behind the car and the maker. So I think I need a little bit more time. I'll probably end up driving my Volvo for the rest of the year, unless I get an amazing deal on a, a used Tesla. Uh, but I'm definitely looking forward to riding uh, in your car and experiencing that. I mean, it's definitely, uh, I, I, it's, 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 they are finally have made all of this progress that I've been waiting for them to make in the last few years. And I'm excited, just I'm an all together. Um, all right, man. Listen, I am a looking. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Can I end with one pitch here, actually? So Please I'm in do. the process of working with a service to actually do a lease transfer. So if you're interested in taking over a lease on a Model S, uh, hit me up on Instagram at my Tesla Adventure. Otherwise, it's going to be taken care of by the internet in like a week. So I'm not worried about it. But if you want to take over the geek ship, that's an option. And and it, I think it comes with. Uh, are you going to keep the uh, digital license plate on the back there? If somebody takes it over from this channel and from and from this feed, I, they can have the digital license plate. That's Otherwise, cool. I'm taking it off and taking it with me. That's pretty cool. Okay. All right. Uh, is there a couch or refrigerator or microwave you want to get rid of uh, while we're on the air? You just let me know. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. It's always fun to talk to you. I wish we could disagree more. I, I, you know, when me and you agree on something, that means it's a really awesome and cool thing. We'll see what happens. Uh, uh, you know, moving forward, it's definitely tempting. I'm looking forward to driving in your riding in your. I don't. Th I don't think I'm allowed to drive your cars anymore, but that's fine. Your P100 DL. Um, so, all right, man. Well, I will see you uh, next Wednesday. Thanks, Alex. All right, guys. Well, so that's pretty much it. I am so excited about. Uh, uh, I mean, I I just found out myself that that Eli is going to get his uh, new P100 DL, uh, which I will consider pretty much the best car in the market. It will be really cool to kind of ride in it and uh, in experience all the latest tech. Um, uh, as as always, looking forward to your comments because. Um, I want to know what you guys think. Are you going to be buying a new one? Are you going to be buying a used one for a good deal? Is this going to be used, used one or the inventory one that is just kind of only a few months old? Uh, I, I really want to know. Don't forget to subscribe to the VIP list, the exclusive newsletter that we send out um, every week with uh, stories and news and offers that you don't get to see or get on this channel. And uh, of course, thank you to all of my Patreons. As always, if you're interested in joining me on Patreon and supporting this independent show, uh, just go to patreon.com slash e4electric. All right, looking forward to your comments. Other than that, see you next time. And remember to stay charged. Stay charged.